All right, got your Bible lifted up towards heaven. Say, I thank God today for the Word of God. Today, I will be taught the uncompromised, the unchanging, infallible love of Almighty God. I am what the Word says I am. I can do what the Word says I can do, and I can have what the Word says I can have. For today is a day that the Lord has made and delivered me from all sickness and all diseases, because my Bible tells me so. For my Bible is God's Word speaking to me. And look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Bible is God's Word speaking to you. Smile real big. Oh, go ahead, you smile bigger than that. Go ahead, smile real big. Wave the Word around this morning. Thank God for the Word today. Turn with me, please, to Philippians this morning, chapter 4, and verse 4. Philippians 4, 4. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Bible in Philippians 4, 4. And we're going to pick up where I got interrupted on last week, the Holy Ghost. And we're going to try it again this morning. But it don't bother me when he interrupts me. Because I know then he's got a better plan than I have. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to talk about rejoice. Amen. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We have to learn to rejoice. And uh, it says here, Philippians 4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, delight, gladden yourselves in him. Again, I say, rejoice. Amen. Now, he didn't just say rejoice. He said, now again, I say, rejoice. Now, Paul here teaching when he was in prison, writing this letter, the epistle of the Philippians, and in prison, he was rejoicing 16 times. Say 16 times. 16. Just in this one book, he talks about rejoicing. Talks about rejoicing. Now, Paul went through some very difficult times. And he was able to rejoice in every obstacle he faced in life. The reason for that is he got a revelation on the road to Damascus when the Lord showed it one day and knocked him to the ground. And he got up a different man. Amen. Praise God. One day God knocked you down. You became a different person. But from that point on, we had to learn and get revelation of who we are in Christ. As the song goes, I know who I am. Amen. I know the perfect one lives on the inside of me. But I know I have challenges. But I want to know when I have challenges, what is my responsibility as a child of God to face these challenges? What's the, one of the greatest things we can do as a child of God when we're faced with difficult times? Understand that joy is the bridge between believing and receiving. Joy is the bridge between believing and receiving. Amen. You got to keep your joy on. Amen. Now, I, you don't have to feel joyful to be joyful. See, I'm joyful because I know the one lives on the inside of me. And Paul says in Galatians 2.20, he says, it's no longer about me, but the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Paul got that revelation of who he is and was in Christ. And that's one of the most main ingredients as a child of God is to get a revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus. Because if you get that revelation that you can rejoice in spite of what you're going through. See, if you don't rejoice when you're going through something, the devil think he's winning. The devil will think he's winning. So we got to rejoice. And I'm going to tell you something. It'll be a faith challenge for you. Hallelujah. It'll be a faith challenge for you. And just getting out of bed in the morning is a faith challenge to rejoice. <laughs> That's the summer I would go and visit Smith Wigglesworth when he was alive years, many, many, many years ago. 
And he said, every time he visited Smith Wigglesworth, he was always up, always upbeat, always happy. Now, he was in his 80s. So one day when he was visiting with him, he said, uh, he said, Mr. Wigglesworth, he said, why are you always up? How do you stay up? Why are you always up? He said, well, the first thing I do every morning is before, when I get out of bed is I dance before the Lord hilariously for about 10 minutes. And some of you can't even make it through the house <laughs> in a fast pace. Here he is in his 80s, 80s years old. I can just see him now rejoicing in the Lord, getting up and rejoicing. Every, see, he started his day off right. He had a revelation like Paul did. Amen. Always rejoicing by faith. You rejoice by faith. You praise God by faith. Some of you came to church this morning by faith. Some of you rather slept in, sleep in this morning, but you came anyway. Thank God. You defy all circumstances and you defy all your feelings. You've got to deny your feelings when it comes to the things of God. Amen. When it comes to the Word of God, you have to deny your feelings. Amen? Amen. You have to do that. Paul says in Acts 20, 26, verse 1 and 2, he said, I just think myself happy. I just think myself happy. And he had to understand that reason he think himself happy because he knew the next step he would be facing more trials. He would already be thinking himself happy before he get there. You need to be thinking yourself happy before you get there tomorrow. Yes. Amen. 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 You are saying tomorrow when I get up, I'm thinking myself happy all day. Amen. I'm going to have a happy day. Amen. All hell may be coming against you. You may be fighting demons on top of demons, but the greatest fight you'll ever have towards a demon is to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Because when you rejoice, your light begins to shine. Amen. See, your celebration is a demonstration of your expectation. Amen. Say that with me. My celebration, my celebration. is a demonstration, demonstration of my expectation. my expectation. So what are you expecting? See, what are you expecting today? What are you expecting? When you got up this morning, what are you expecting today? I'm expecting to have a great day. Amen. In spite of the challenge we go through, I'm having a great day. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody says, are you having a great day like I am? Yes. Now look at your other neighbor and ask them the same question. Are you having a great day like I am? Now, you should never get up in the morning and say, oh, my God, another day. I just barely made it through yesterday. I got another hectic, crazy day today. My wife was reading something this morning. One of her family members, I'm not going to mention any names, but the lady said, man, I didn't want to go I'm fighting all kinds of demons and devils and stuff, but I'm still going to go to church. I'm still going to go to church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Why? People are doing that. Why do you want to just come to church anyway? Because when you get around corporate believers, yes. people that believe like you believe, yes. the presence of the anointing of the Holy Ghost is in that atmosphere. Yes. And that anointing will break every yoke yes. and destroy every burden. Amen. It'll destroy it. But you got to learn to rejoice. Time and time again, Paul had to learn how to rejoice during shipwreck times. When he, in the Acts, he talks about uh, the ship was falling apart and, and, and Paul was a prisoner on that board and, and uh, he just told everybody, just, just cheer up. Now, they're going through a, a time that the ship is sinking. See, sometimes you feel like you're sinking but you just got to cheer up. I said, you just, you just got to cheer up. See, if you only knew what happens in the spirit, when you rejoice in the Lord, you rejoice every day. You're activating heaven because God loves for you to rejoice. Look at Psalms chapter two. Psalms chapter two. 
<laughs> so I'm rejoicing in the Lord. Always. And again, I am going to rejoice. Hallelujah. Now, I didn't say you're going to feel like it. I am going to rejoice. Amen. I like what Psalms chapter 2, verse 4 says. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. Who's sitting in heaven? The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And they're laughing. I said, they're laughing. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. I said, they're laughing. Amen. We have to learn how to just laugh in the Holy Ghost. Just laugh and give him some praise and laughter. In Psalms 37, verse 13 says this. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that this day, his day is coming. See, he knows the end results of the devil. And the Lord just laughs about it. He just laughs about it. You need to see your end results as victory. You're not fighting to get victory. You're fighting from victory to victory. I said, you're not fighting to get victory over your situation. You're already victorious, fighting in your victory to bring forth more victory into your life. Amen. Matters not what you're dealing with. Matters not what you're going through. It takes a sacrifice when things are not going so well. The Bible says, give the Lord a sacrifice of praise. Paul had a revelation by staying happy, singing, that would bring deliverance. He had that expectation. Even in Acts chapter 16, when Paul and Silas was in jail, what do you do? They begin to dance, begin to praise God, sing sings, what, sing songs. What did, what did the father do? He got so excited, the jail broke open. Yes. Praising God, getting happy and rejoicing will bring light into your situation. Yes. Are you hearing me this morning? Many times it just doesn't seem like a good time to celebrate. You say, well, Pastor, this is just not a good time to celebrate. But it's always the right time. Amen. It may not be a good time, but it's always the right time. Amen. Everybody say, this is the right time for me to get happy right now. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> if you hear yourself laugh, you laugh harder. Ha, ha, ha. People think we are ridiculous, but they don't know what we know. That's the difference. I said, that's the difference. Amen. Nehemiah 8.10 says this, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And it also translates into our stronghold. Joy is our stronghold. Joy keeps us strong when we're challenged with cha challenges, difficulties in life today. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Say the joy, the joy of the Lord, the Lord is, my is my strength. Faith will always, faith will always reach down on the inside and conquer what you're facing on the outside. Faith. Faith is the foundation of our joy. Faith is the foundation of us rejoicing in the Lord. The word rejoice means this. It means to, to lighten up, smile, and spin like a top. When's the last time you just jumped up and smiled, brightened up, and started spinning like a top? Somebody said, well, they're going to think I'm silly. Well, let them think you're silly, but you're getting victory. You, you are a winner. Are you hearing me? In times of trouble, you can say like Paul says in Romans 8, 39, say, I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. Death or life, nothing is going to separate me from the love of God because I got this joy so strong inside of me, Amen. so strong inside of me, I can rejoice in spite of what I'm dealing with. So I'm thinking myself happy. Amen. Paul tells everyone, he says on that ship, he says, just cheer up. Amen. Look at your name, say, just go ahead and cheer up. Amen. Just look happy anyway. Smile anyway. You know, people go get faith lifts to help them smile. If you start laughing, that's your faith lift. It don't cost you nothing 
to get a Holy Ghost facelift. And if you start laughing in the Holy Ghost, you'll get an automatic face job. Because you cannot, you cannot frown and laugh at the same time. Or try sometime. Look in the mirror when you get home and try to laugh and frown at the same time. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's like trying to dance and stand still at the same time. It just don't work, does it? Amen. Jordan Hebrew means to rejoice. To rejoice. It is that joy which expresses itself in the gesture of the body. Look over here to 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Oh, David, King David. I got to talk about him a little bit this morning. 2 Samuel chapter 6. When you get there, shout amen. I'm getting there. Let's look at verse, chapter 6, verse 14. Then David danced. Here's a king now. King David. He danced before the Lord with all of his might. David was wearing just a linen ephod, just his underwear. Yeah, somebody would really think that would be stupid. A king dancing in his underwear. And so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with a sound of the trumpet. Now as the ark of the Lord was in the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. She said, I cannot believe I'm connected to this man. He's acting weird. He's a king of this nation. He's took his clothes off. He's out there spinning like a top, <laughs> praising his God. That just made her so mad in her heart. She said, I just despise him. But notice verse 20. Then David returned to bless this household. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants. It's one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. She said, You just act like the group. <clears throat> you just act like the rest of the Israelis dancing. You're a king. You should be above shouting, above dancing. You should be above that. People sometimes say, you're too dignified to shout. You're too dignified to get out there and dance before the Lord. Then if you're too dignified to do that, you're just too dignified. Amen. Too dignified. See, the thing of it is we don't let ourselves let go to let God be released inside of us. We need to say, God, here I am. Use me. God, here I am. I don't care if I stand on my head. Is this what God is moving in my life to do? I'm going to do it. I'll climb that pole backwards if the Holy Ghost tells me to. <laughs> now, if you see me climbing that pole backwards, you know it's the Holy Ghost. But people get, are too starchy. Christians are too starchy. Don't put me into an all-white church. Well, that's some of the starchest people you can ever be around sometimes. In, most, in a lot of cases, not in every case, but a lot of cases. But I like my congregation. I like a, I like a mixed breed. The breed of the Holy Ghost. People, people know how to shout. They know how to dance. We, we went out with our, our staff and our, uh, uh, our leaders last night, took a cruise out there on that uh, Spirit of Norfolk. And I mean, it, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a uh, gospel cruise. Really, they should have said a Holy Ghost cruise. You might have saw it on Facebook. Somebody, I think some David, somebody put a bunch of people on Facebook. A bunch of Holy Ghost people just having a good time. Man, you can't have a better time in the world than you can with the Holy Ghost people. I love, I'd rather be around the Holy Ghost people anytime than starchy, dignified, hold yourself in place, 
Don't let, don't, look, Jim, I can make sure my code button. I remember here years ago, Dad Hagen was here, and you heard me say it many times. He was here preaching a meeting, and, and uh, back in those days, he had a lot of board members, and every one of them was wealthy, millionaires. And they all just sit in one group over here. And the Spirit of God gets to moving. They get to moving. I saw millionaires. God is my witness. We saw millionaires. Some of you saw that millionaire rolling in the floor. Someone said, what good does that do? It releases things in your life that you may be bound up in. See, so, some of you are so bound up, you can't even take your shoes off. You need to just loosen up. Loosen up in the Holy Ghost. Just like King David is. I don't care who's around me. I'm the king. He doesn't strip me of my authority because when I dance, I'm still king. Because, see, his wife said, well, they, what do you think they're going to think of? They're going to still see me as king. They're going to still see me as king. Why? Because they knew who his God was. He's still king. Amen. Amen. We've got to get loosened up sometime. I'm telling you, I'm not talking about just putting on an act. I'm talking about when the spirit gets to moving. Sometimes the spirit gets to moving. You need to move with it. Don't look around and see if anybody else is going to move first. See, we're not here to come and be watchers. We're here to be participators. And sometimes God moves that way. Dad Hagen always say, if the Spirit teaches there, teach. If the Spirit there to preach, preach. If the Holy Ghost is there to move, move with the Holy Ghost. That's what happened last week. We just move with the Holy Ghost. I, just, I want what God wants. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the Holy Ghost. I didn't come to church this morning to have a little 30-minute service and have a, a little clappy song. I come to church to hear from God. I come to church to be a participator. I come to church to shout and dance and raise God, praising God. Hallelujah. I want to be able to leave today and say, my God, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord today. It's been good to be with God's people today. I enjoy being with the Holy Ghost today. I'll tell you, just a little bit in the presence of God, take care of all your difficulties. All your pride, all your unbelief, it'll straighten you right up. I said it'll straighten you right up. I'm telling you, God is so good. I remember the first time the Holy Ghost fell on me. We was in my house, New Year's Eve night, late. We just came back from church service. My wife and I, another couple, Dickie Daughters, his wife, he was an evangelist. And we was, went home and said, we're going to still pray some more. Man, this gets good when you go home after church and we still want to pray. Amen. Somebody came home ready to get something to eat. And there's nothing wrong with that. But there's sometimes, you know, when you get done, you just want to, you ain't done. Somebody said, how long are you supposed to pray till I get done? How long am I supposed to spend in prayer? Hour, two hours, till I get done. It might be 10 minutes. It might be... 15, it might be 30 minutes, it might be a night. I don't, but when I'm done, I'm done Amen. for that prayer time there. Amen. But we were praying New Year's Eve. This is back way back in the 60s, late 60s. Some of you weren't even born there. And Holy Ghost still moved back before you was born. <laughs> and we was in the house, in the living room, little, it's a little, little house, not too big. And we had a coffee table right there. And the coffee table was kind of real close to the couch, wasn't it, honey? Pretty close to the couch. And we were sitting on one end, and they were sitting on the other end. We just got to praying and worshiping. The next thing I know, I was laying on the floor, had fell between the coffee table and the sofa, and didn't move neither one of them. <laughs> Holy Ghost is awesome. Amen. I said, the Holy Ghost is awesome. Amen. See, here's the way we pray. God, just have your way. God, have your way. We had a prayer meeting in the house one night. And, of course, my pastor, we told him about our meetings and stuff. We don't do things not till our pastor. Amen. 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 I don't want to have any secret prayer meetings without my pastor know what's going on. Because I want to get his permission on it. If, he ain't got my, if I don't have his blessing on it, we're not going to do it. 
Anybody, a lot of people got filled with the Holy Ghost. We was in the Baptist church. In the Baptist church. Holy Ghost was moving. People getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. Man, we was having a good time. And so after, every, after service on Sunday nights, we go to the uh, old sanctuary. That's after we got the new one. We get an old sanctuary, maybe a bunch of us over there, and Pastor, he come over and join us. And we prayed God, pray in tongues, praise in tongues. And people got to come in to me and said, Pastor, lay your hands on me. I remember one time I was in the pastor's office. And, and, there, and the great big old boy man came in there and said, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost start speaking in tongues right then. <laughs> didn't he lay hands on him? Didn't he have to pray for him? When you're hungry, when you're hungry and thirsty, you shall be filled. Amen. Things were happening. But we had a prayer meeting in our home, and, and I mean, the Spirit of God got to moving. There was about 20 of us in there. And we were praying. Now, this is all new to us. I mean, we just, I mean, we was, you know, sometimes it's good to be ignorant about some things. That way you don't hinder the Spirit. And so we were just, we were just hungry young kids. I mean, just having a time in the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, just have your way. we just praying in the Holy Ghost. I mean, the glory of God, the cloud of glory came in that place. It was so thick in there. All of a sudden, like a wind came blowing in there. And it picked me up off of the floor and put me up against the wall, didn't it, honey? We got witnesses. I mean, literally put me up off of the floor midair and held me up against the wall. The only time this ever happened. Me there. And, and all of a sudden, I, I came to myself and I got scared. I don't know what was happening. And one, the moment I looked to the natural, I fell down. And one, one other lady, she was over here, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost picked her up like floating and laid her right on the couch. And she didn't just fall on it now. She like levitated, just floated right over. I said, Why is that? That's signs and wonders. When you get in the Holy Ghost, all kinds of things can happen. Miracles happen. Things happen. Hallelujah. Things are happening right now. When you rejoice, things happen in the spirit. Things you don't even know about. Things are happening in your home. When you get in the Holy Ghost, get to praising God, get happy. Things are happening at your home, in your family, on your jobs, where you work, wherever you're doing, things are happening. Sometimes we emphasize prayer about so much all the time about the same thing over and over again. You don't want to do that. You just need to get in rejoicing. When you pray, start rejoicing. Just start rejoicing. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? David said here, how glorious was the king of Israel today, she said, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servant as one of the base fellows, shamelessly uncovering himself. And David said to Michael, it was before the Lord. I did it because of him. It was before God. I did it for him. Who chose me instead of your father. Man, that's a slap in the face. See, if your father learned how to worship God, I wouldn't have to take his place. See, you're, when you start praising God, God may be taking you to replace somebody else. <laughs> that gets, I already get a Baptist shouting right there, I tell you. David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father. He could say, ha, 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 but he didn't. <laughs> and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. I will even, I will even more undignified. And I will be even more undignified. I will even be more undignified than this. I will be more undignified and will be an humble in my own sight. But as for the maidservants of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. I'm still going to be held in honor. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. She was restricted what God had planned for her because she was denying the blessings of God on her husband. They would say, I still look like a king in front of the servants. Even though I was dancing out there in Monday 
Why? Because people didn't see him undressed like that. They saw the glory of God. They saw the glory of God. When you get your mind on the things of God, you'll see the glory of God. You won't look at the issues or the problems or the messy clothes, messy hair. Some people, see, some people don't want to cry because they messed up their makeup. You can always put some more on later. Some men don't want to roll in full mess of their suit or the coat. Take the jacket off. Take the jacket off. We was in a meeting down in uh, down in Louisiana with uh, Lee Ward Thompson. Dr uh, dress, what's his name in that place? Anyway, they had was down there de dedicating his new building. So we all went in there and, and had a big meeting that week. And one night, Dad was preaching, and the uh, Holy Ghost began to move. And uh, he'd come by there and he'd... He hit Pastor Cowan on the leg, and uh, he went out, rolled all on the floor. And I looked over there, next thing I know, he had took his, took, took his coat off and slung it, and he hit me. When he hit me, I was rolling in Dad Hagen's coat. <laughs> I didn't think about it then, but I said, that was a good thing to happen. <laughs> rolling in the anointed, the man, anointed man's coat. And Mom Megan said, he, he's rolling in Dad's coat. <laughs> <laughs> but see, we, I just always said, Lord, just have your way. I don't care. We need to get undignified sometime. Yes, sir. Get undignified. Let yourself go sometime. Yes, Praise God. Somebody said, well, I can't run. Scoot. Yes. <laughs> Scoot. I said, I can't really raise my hand that high. Raise a finger. Be sure you raise these. The right ones. David said, I still look like a king. For the eyes of the servants, because they see me worshiping a real God. When we worship and know who we're worshiping, I don't worry about what people think. If I was concerned about what people think, I'd have been dead a long time ago. I would have been out of ministry a long time ago. Because people give up on you quick. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll always be there with you. Amen. I'm not here to please people. You're not here to please nobody, but we're here to please the Father. Is anybody here want to please the Father this morning? Someone say, I'm going to please the Father. Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. To joy is to exalt, to triumph, to cry out, to shout, exaltations, to live joyfully. A loud noise, shout for joy. When you've got a lot of challenges and, and the mind's uh, being attacked by the enemy, throwing all kinds of crazy thoughts and, and doubt and unbelief to your head, you got to shout, make your, yourself known louder than those negative shouts. Amen. Praise God louder than those negative, negative shouts. Amen. Hallelujah. There's something you got to work on. I said, we have to work on it. I've been in this a long time. I'm still working on it. We still work on it. Why? Because we live in a flesh. This flesh does not want to dance for the Lord. It wants to dance for the devil. It does not want to sing to the Lord. It wants to sing for the devil. But I'll tell you one thing. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost, Paul says in Corinthians. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to praise him in this temple. To live joyfully, to laugh. Another meaning of joy means to laugh the darkness away. Did you know that when you start laughing, the darkness disappears? Yeah. Huh? You ever really start laughing? I mean, you just really start laughing. You start laughing by faith. You keep laughing by faith. All of a sudden, you'll kick in. You just kick in. Kind of like driving down the road. You don't need to pass somebody. You'll kick in the overdrive. <clears throat> Go right around. That's what happens when you, see, when you get to praising God. Yeah. Laughing the Holy Ghost. You'll just kick right in. And I mean to tell you, it won't be an effort. 
I said, when you kick into the Holy Ghost, it will not be an effort. It will be an easy thing to do. But see, some people can't even get involved in the things of God because they're so involved in Facebook. Even during services, they probably take to somebody across the room. <laughs> take to somebody outside. Answer some phone calls. Do that after church. I've come to church to hear the Holy Ghost. I didn't come to hear your voice. I've come to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. Turn your phones off. We survived without them before they ever came along. Phones I used to use when I was dating my wife with a a phone hanging off the side of a telephone pole. <laughs> and I had to pull up real close to her when it was raining because it had no cover on it. It had a little canopy just over top of the, the, the phone box there. And I had to stretch that cord, stretch my neck. One, it's a wonder if my neck is not that long. <laughs> and we would talk, and we would talk, and we would talk, and we would talk. <laughs> But you know, you find yourself in uncomfortable positions sometimes, but because you're talking to the woman that you love or the man you love, you don't mind getting out of position. That's right. Amen. And when you start worshiping God, and dancing before you get yourself out of a position you're not used to sometimes. But it's worth it for someone that you love. Amen. Worth it for someone that you love. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. People use these, they say, act like they can't even, they can't even go to bed. I bet they get up sometime during the night, 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, take somebody and say, I forgot to tell you what I ate for supper. <laughs> don't ever text me at 2 o'clock in the morning and tell me what you eat. I don't care what you eat for supper or for dinner or your snacks. <laughs> I've kind of cut back, way back off my Facebook now, way back. Because I see so many silly things on there. And sometimes I'm disappointed in some of our members. If you, if you don't mean to see your mess on your Facebook, take me off your Facebook. I may not respond to it, and I probably won't. But I know what's going on. But we need to concentrate on the Word. We need to spend some time in the Word of God. The greatest, the greatest prosperity in your life is getting revelation of who you are in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. Jude 20 says, praying in the Holy Ghost, building yourself up in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost. Yes. You know, when you find out Acts 2, the power of God came down, filled 120, and by the time you got to verse 44, did you know all those people got saved? That was not one need. Go read it. Everybody, thousands of people got saved and every need was met. That's supernatural. Wouldn't it be wonderful? We come to church and there was not no needs. Not no needs. It should be that way. Every need, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. So let's get into his glory by praising him and glorify him. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. He'll provide when it seems like it's impossible to provide. We've had just recently, this, this other day, Travis last Sunday gave a testimony that God delivered him out of debt. And before he left church, he had just a little bit of debt left, and that was paid off. <laughs> Praise God. God don't want you in debt. People get in debt, get in debt, pile up, and then they, and they cry because they can't make it. They, then they get, when you get so much debt, you can't give to God. You can't pay your tithes. See, what happens, the enemy gets you to a, a deceptive mind where you can't pay your tithes and, and give offerings. I don't know about you, but I, want my, I like to be in a position where I can give $1,000 every week. But it'd be something we had to, if we needed about $5 million, and, and I would get up here, I'd say, hey, folks, this, we need to raise $5 million. I'll be the first one to give a million dollars. How many more? Be, be four more people jump right up. Real quick, boom, 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 million, million each. 
And then you got the rest of the church said, they got mad because you didn't give me an opportunity. He said, you didn't move fast enough. That's the way it should be. I know that's hypothetical, but we understand what we're saying here. But through rejoicing and rejoicing, magnifying the name of the Lord, your celebration is a demonstration of your expectation. I expect God to move. Even when I'm on my back, God's going to move. When I'm laying flat on my back and don't understand what's going on in my life seven years ago, God moved. And all I could do, I still could pray in the Holy Ghost. I could not talk, but God moved because I had my mind stayed on him. I thought about the blood of Jesus when the tests, going through all the tests. God, <coughs> God moved. <coughs> Hallelujah. 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 God moved. And he's still moving. He's still moving. He'll raise you up out of your mess. You don't have to be as bad, bad as what I went through. Whatever you're going through may be bad, but he'll raise you up out of that. Keep your mind stayed on him. Don't look at the problem, look at the answer. The answer is Jesus. Somebody said the answer is Jesus. He'll deliver from drugs, alcohol, dope, any habit you may be that's ungodly for your body, he'll deliver you from it if you want to be. Amen. Things I had uh, trouble with when I first got saved, God supernaturally delivered me from it. It took a lot of effort on my part on some issues. Some issues was instant. There's other issues. I don't understand why it didn't all happen at the same time. I guess he wanted me to put my faith on some things. Somebody said, what do we need faith for? You always got to have faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Father. We have faith to take care of what we're going through. Faith to praise him. Faith to magnify the wonderful name of Jesus. I said faith to magnify the wonderful name of Jesus. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. Every day. I said every day. God wants us happy. We need to find something every day. Every day we need to find something we can get happy about. Get happy about your marriage. You need to get hilarious about your marriage. Get happy about it. Don't get caught in what we call the rut. I've been married, we've been married five years. Five years. I call that the beginning stage of honeymoons. You can stay happy. My wife and I, we're happy people. Do we have any challenges? Yes. But we win every challenge. Do we have any disagreements? Lightly. I grade it lightly. I don't want to put a number on it because I don't ever know, you know. But we always get through what? Because we love Jesus. Jesus is first. I see the goodness of God. I see the mercy of God. I saw what he brought me from, what he brought my wife from, how he delivered us, and how he delivered my kids, where he brought them from. As I told you many times, my youngest son's an associate pastor here. My older son is an evangelist. They didn't come by mistake. He comes by staying steadfast, believing God. When they were wavering a little bit, mama go find it when they were young. She'd take that long finger and she'd find them. She said, you get to the house right now. Get to the house right now. She'd find them. She'd sit on their bed at night, talk to them. They want to marry this one. They want to marry that one. I'd say Phil was worse. I don't know whether Gil ever wanted to marry somebody else or not. He never did, did he? You found the right one to start with, didn't you? Yes, good confession. <laughs> you might say that, buddy. She'll knock you out. She'll knock you out and pray for you. 
<laughs> but she had to sit beside everybody tell them, no, you're not marrying this one. I don't feel good about this one. I don't feel good about this one. One time he said, Mama, I found the right way. Don't pray about this one. <laughs> she, did, she did pray. But when she found the right one, she said, yep, that's it. Go ahead. You got to take your stand. You can't just say, kids, just do whatever you want to do. That's why some of you can't rejoice now because you let your kids go wild. I don't know how I got off on all that. <laughs> Parents need to tighten up on their kids. You need to get your kids together and rejoice with them. Amen. Get your family together and have a prayer meeting. Praising God, glorifying God. Say, look, before you go out of this house today, we're going to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Have breakfast, pray, celebrate, and have great expectation for the best day of your life. Stand it with me and praise him right now. Again, Paul said, I thank myself happy. Sometimes I'm going to thank myself happy. Thank myself happy. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank myself happy. Oh, any happy people in the house? Come on, somebody give me a shout. I'm a happy man. I'm a happy woman. I got a happy marriage. Shout, I got a happy marriage. If you ain't married yet, say, when I do get married, it's going to be a happy marriage. Single people, listen to me. You don't get married to get happy. If you ain't happy before you get married, you may not get happy after you get married. Because if you don't marry the right one, be patient. Somebody said, well, I'm, I've been patient a long time. Just keep being patient. It'll take place. Amen. But while you're waiting, don't just wait for a spouse. Worship God. Trust him. Lord, you know my life. You know what my needs are. I'm not going to be concerned about it no more. I'm going to just rest in it. I'm going to enjoy where I'm at. If I'm single, I'm going to enjoy. If I'm married, I'm going to enjoy. Amen. Amen. Just be happy. Amen. Whatever you're dealing with physically. You know, in times we live today, is so much hate, so much division in the world today. But the body of Christ got to say like this. Amen. Don't let the world pull you into their way of thinking. Right. Don't let them pull you into their way of thinking. We've done seen how crazy things can get in the world. But Jesus said, John 16, 33, but I've overcome the world. Amen. I've overcome the world. We overcome every obstacle, every doubt, every unbelief, every problem. Amen. I'm not going to let the world issues affect me. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to let it affect me. I don't care who's in the White House. The greenhouse, or whatever house, it ain't gonna affect me. Cause my faith is in this. This is the house I'm in. I'm in God's house. But God's people, for the right time, right place, for the right people. Heavenly Father, we pray. We pray, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Touch our hearts, strengthen us, Father, as we rejoice. Yes. And again, we shall rejoice. Getting a revelation how important it is for us to just rejoice in the Lord. Get hilarious. We know that laughter drives out darkness. And we're just going to keep laughing, Father. We're going to just keep laughing. Ha, ha, ha. We're going to keep laughing and praising you, Lord. Yes. And all that we deal with in life, we laugh because we, in spite of the situation, not because of the situation, but in spite of the situation, we just going to keep laughing and keep praising God. 